could we um uh maybe we'll we'll start with kind of the the boring stuff of doing the minutes and then we can do a round of intros for marguerite um and then dive right into hearing more about how the stipend process is going on with essex um and then maybe i can kind of give an overview of what's happening with creative discourse and then kind of get marguerite's opinion on that as well um before um have saying goodbye and then kind of finalizing our, our proposal for next steps um before doing kind of the report backs and a kind of like the rest of our regular standing agenda does that sound good and yes. michael did you hear that i just saw you okay great cool i was yes. just like you just put your headphones on noted what does that mean okay um so folks want to pull up the minutes um if anyone has any changes or amendments so i'll um, make a motion to approve the minutes as circulated i will second jeremy seconds all in favor aye aye any opposed great motion passes um cool um marguerite welcome thanks so much for joining with us my name's shana i use your pronouns i live on kent street in montpelier and um i work with uh people with type 1 diabetes on insulin pricing reform in my other hat um I don't know. Yeah. What else? We should have like some norms around how we do introductions every time I feel like I'm making it up from scratch. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Jeremy, do you want to go next? <laughs> sure. Good morning. My name is Jeremy Beaudry, a resident of Montpelier for um, going on almost seven years. I've uh, been on the committee for a little bit more than a year, I think. Um, yeah, that's me. Welcome. <clears throat> I'm Michael Sherman. Uh, I am also a resident of Montpelier. I've been here over 30 years. I've lost track of the number exactly, but um, and I am the last remaining original member of this committee. <laughs> um, um, so it's been a long, a long time. Uh, right. Right. Um, I'm Marguerite Ladd. I'm the assistant manager of Essex town and village, uh, soon to just be the deputy manager of the town as the legislation moves through that process. So it's, you know, its own excitement. Um, but yeah, I guess you, you tell me, what do you, what do yeah. you want to know? How do, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure how much Cameron shared with you, but that we um, worked with Creative Discourse in 20, 2020, right? Yeah, 2020. Um, to kind of do a process of surveying our members and um, I'm sorry, our members, surveying residents and people who use city services and kind of um, identity based focus groups to really figure out what are what are some proposals of things that the city can do um, to be more equitable, kind of like a, a first cut of prioritization process. And as a um, as a, a part of that, some things were pretty, you know, I want to say easy because I was not the one doing them, but like of updating our website of our history and things like that. Um, and then one thing that we're looking at taking on is um, uh, one of the recommendations was stipends. And I, I understand that you know Creative Discourse also worked with Essex to do stipends. Um, I reached out to like some other folks that I know in Essex and kind of got forwarded some materials about what that um, what that stipend process um, looked like. I understand that it passed last year and that it is went into effect in January. Um, you know, you kind of had six months ramp up time to be able to offer stipends um, and that it was kind of passed as a budget item on, on, on last year's budget. Um, so similarly, it is a, we've, we've got $30,000 from the city to be able to have stipends for city committees as kind of a one year pilot proposal. Um, we have a lot of committees, a lot of members in Montpelier, as you probably know, and um, and so that thirty thousand dollars does not cover all of the, you know, uh, would not, would not would not cover all of the potential need that could happen. So one thing that we're looking at is kind of like how to prior, what kind of process we could go through in order to do that prioritization, um, and that because it's a pilot proposal wanting to see the impact and see the change that's happening. So wanting to do a kind of a pre-survey and a post-survey. Um, and then uh, for kind of consulting with that, looking at potentially um, contracting with 
um, creative discourse again on kind of like a really short term, low um, hour basis to kind of review the materials and, and things like that. So that's kind of, I think, a little bit of where we are. Let me know if you have any questions. But then I think what we're looking to hear from you about is kind of what recognizing you're, you know, about six months ahead of where we're going to be. How has that, like, kind of how, how, how did you guys come up with your structures and your systems? Like what's working, what's not working? What are some tensions that you're holding um, in, in kind of implementing the, the stipend process? Actually, let me pause there, Michael, Jeremy, Cameron, did, any any other context? Okay. Yeah, so do you have any questions about that or, yeah, or just dive in? No, yeah. Um, yes, so our, that's all, yes, great, accurate uh, reconnaissance on your part. Um, I would say that, um, the, the, yes, so essentially the village actually passed there so that it went in during the fiscal year was in effect. So we had two different, oh, um, okay. which just, yes, adds to the, to the fun. Um, so we had the village, you know, committees, we also share committees. Um, so sometimes we have village residents and, you know, who are also town residents, but those who are not village residents on committees as well. Um, and that went into effect in January. So we were, um, I did, I actually wasn't, I wasn't working for Essex when it got, when the policy got passed. Um, and so when I came on, um, I was sort of tasked with like, okay, now do this. And Great. so, um, and so I would say, yes. Yeah. So the first thing we were looking at kind of, I, was, I wanna say first, but one of the first things, same, similar thing is we have two different kind of budgets and the village was like, everyone's automatically in, but they could opt out. They set that in their policy. Whereas the town set in their policy, anyone could opt in. So you would need to opt in in order to get the stipend. So that was kind of how they were working with the budget and how they just for preliminarily to your point of, you know, trying to guess a little bit, but also kind of estimate how much they might need or who might actually, you know, want to use the stipend program to begin with. And we've already had a few who, um, you know, didn't, you know, opted out or whatever, that kind of thing totally depends. Let's, let's the person decide what they need, basically, instead of putting us in the seat of trying to prioritize or decide for them. Um, so that was set actually in the policy, which was um, helpful to some degree, and at least just to your point of having to carry out any sort of prioritization, it just at this point leaves it in their hands. Um, I would say this was a very iterative process, and, and we've already changed our form two or three times. Um, so the, the next thing we sort of looked at was our finance policies that we had in place in the municipality, and or both, they're a little different, but just looking at that and we had to decide, you know, once we got past like opt in, opt out, how do we figure that out for someone then getting past, do we, do we pay them as employees or do we pay them, you know, sort of as um, kind of like a consultant or, you know, like volunteer kind of thing as we do with other, you know, other instances that we have. And so that's where a lot of the discussion has happened because we also have, you know, select board member, you know, we have other committees that we already pay stipends to and those we do as employees. So we were like, well, maybe we would do this all as employees, but then, you know, we're looking at an HR department with one person that is suddenly gonna be inundated with employee paperwork, you know, potentially, like you're saying, we have lots of committees as well, lots of people on them. Is that really, you know, is that bottleneck gonna, be, you know, just the worst thing that allows it so that there's a barrier that they can't get paid. So um, that was one of the first things we sort of talked about. And we went with paying them as um, sort of more the consultant route for now. I will say that having rolled this out a little bit more, we're actually thinking that, you know, depending on sort of how the budget goes this year and et cetera, all of that, maybe switching that actually to move it back to employee. And part of that is because we've run into all of these issues with the insurance. And, oh. um, and so we're with passive. So and they've been one, wonderfully helpful. I don't mean to say that, but I mean, um, you know, they're working on it. This is the systemic part. They're working at it from their up levels of what, how they cover that or how they don't. And would we get into, you know, how do we, how do we get ourselves, make sure we're, we're protecting ourselves and protecting our taxpayers at the same time as trying to get them this help. So um, that has gone back and forth a few different times that we've gotten different information during different steps of the process as to 
what kind of paperwork they would need. At first it was just, okay, they just need, um, you know, they don't need to fill out any of the sort of hold harmless non-employee paperwork that we ask for all other kind of non-employee type payments. And so we were like, okay, that's less paperwork, that's good because sorry, if you hold there for a minute, we were having on the equity level already the fact that they, people would have to fill in the W-9, right? Like, how do we deal with that? And that's something that's a finance policy that we need to be able to track our dollars. And so that's a whole equity conversation we were sort of having in this department over here. Whereas, you know, in our, just our passive finance insurance department, we were kind of having a different conversation of what would we even need? You know, what kind of paperwork are we asking people to fill out and what kind of barriers is that presenting already? You know, and so we sort of narrowed it down that we, you know, it's the, the $600 for the IRS. If you don't get paid more than that, then technically we don't need your W-9. But is that fiscally responsible and safe given what, you know, GFOA says or what those policies are in place and how comfortable does finance, you know, feel about that? So it's sort of like bringing all of this along. <laughs> Um, and just, you know, and a lot of people were having, I would say, you know, just felt the systemicness of it. I just think it, it's such a great, <laughs> great pointing out yeah. of how far deep it goes and how yeah. you kind of have to unbury all of these things of like, ah, yes, this is built in, this is built in, this is built in, which is how we got here sort of in the first place. So, um, so we went the W9, we were like, okay, well, we'll just have everyone fill out the W9, even though. We, we, you know, we're a little bit from the equity standpoint, that's not our best option, but we are, you know, maybe there'll be a way to get, we're trying to look for some other ways. So we put some help on there on how to fill out a W-9, how to get help with taxes. That was sort of our option was to put on the form ways to ask about, you know, translation, what is a W-9? Why would you need it? What would it do to you? You know, like who could you call for free for tax advice? That kind of thing. So that was kind of our moderate approach at least for the moment hoping that and sorry i don't know if cameron's catching on this but like or like can you can you also share the the document of just like totally what are, yeah, yeah, what are all the things that, that you looked at like yes. taxes no problem. Like, yeah, yes. cool, cool, cool. yeah um no problem and yes Kim, if you have questions at any time feel free to call no problem um and so i think you know so we just sort of went with that for the moment and then um uh, yeah, so we're hoping that maybe in the future, as we work with financing through this, we can find a way that not needing a W-9 is still satisfactory for all of our taxpayers and all of those kind of assurances we need there. Um, so that's the way we went there. And then we later heard that actually, you know, we do need those forms from them as well. So now not only are we asking the Bell W-9, they now need to fill out a non-employee form and uh, <laughs> like, hold harmless, which just seems like, seems very, for the equity standpoint, like, uh, we're, you know, this is just going to be a barrier for sure. And so we're, it's, you know, we're working with it. So we're like, okay, well, we'll do that for now, of course. And like, let's keep working this problem. So, uh, you know, as we sort of work back and forth, it seems that um, actually it's okay. We don't need those two forms for this type of payment because it's up to a certain amount. I don't know all the insurance, so I don't want to get that wrong here. I won't, I won't say that yeah. here, but but you'd have to work with your insurance company to figure that out. So, you know, we have a few of those forms from some people, we'll just hold them and we're just not gonna kind of push on it at this point. Cause we've also sent out a new form to our committees probably like three times now. So we're trying to not be confusing and uh, you know, so, um, so that's, um, I would say that's where we're at just with the form itself. So we're hoping we'll, we'll, pro we'll probably readdress it in the future and move to maybe an employee basis just cause it's less paperwork in the long run. And um, we think it will work just if we did it better in a different way. Um, the other part of this was that we needed to figure out like staffing then for each committee. Most of our committees have a staff member, but not all. And that, you know, we didn't want to task suddenly a volunteer with sort of that kind of, I, you know, just, just suddenly hand them off with that kind of having to do that kind of paperwork, you know, that kind of thing. Some of them, sure, no problem. Others just aren't, that's not what they signed up for in the first place. Um, so we worked, you know, that was another part of it was working to make sure every staff representative, every committee had a staff representative and every staff representative now takes attendance because that, so that's the whole like reporting yeah. on yeah. attendance and how do we do that part? So now they take attendance um, every meeting and um, I'm sorry, I forget now, we've changed it a few times, but I think it's up, so you can get paid up to six months 
retroactively of attendance, but like past that, you know, if you don't fill out, say you didn't opt in, but then you want to, those types of things or you, whatever, then we are putting us at least some marker on there for finance to like give them a just stop date and as well for our budget and those types of things so that we can do proper predicting. But basically the staff member then takes attendance and then submits it um, you know, to at this point to the finance department. This is also something that it's not it's not the most ideal yet. So maybe, you know, we're still ironing out what job maybe that should be, but for the moment that's where it's at. Um, and so they sort of just say, yes, these people were there. And if those people have opted in, you know, then we, we sort of pay them out that way um, <clears throat> in that sense. The other I'm part- so sorry, that, just can I, is the point there is that like the people on the committee don't necessarily know who's getting the stipend and who's not. Correct. That's all kind of exactly. in the finance department. Right, okay, right. so there's like a divide. Okay. We try and make it just right. It's just streamlined. We don't need to put that into kind of, you know, volunteer hands that can be staff hands, yep. keep the, keep it where, you know, sort of confidential under those kinds of um, right, guidelines and right, people who have signed up to be under confidential regulations, you know, and just yep, yep, sort yep. of it's not aired out there. Um, I and, have a, um, uh, yeah. Just one question about, um, was, was the sole reason to put a staff member just to take attendance? Uh, because otherwise, the other way to do that would be just to be using the minutes of the meetings, which we always start with recording who's there. It's um, true. It, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think you could. We talked about that. And I think part of it was just we um, were some of the minutes we get from some of our committees aren't sure. always <laughs> also timely and um, as accurate as we might want or hope just because. And so we thought, let's just try this for now and see how it goes. And if we can get a feel that it's, you know, fine and unnecessary, then maybe we can readdress it and that sort of thing. Um, Part of us was also like maybe every committee should have a staff anyway just because it's kind of helpful to have for the committee to have some sort of you know pillar they don't necessarily have to go to every meeting hopefully in the future to your point but just to have that kind of um back and forth municipality um and most of them had one so it wasn't like we were applying a new one to many it was probably like three or four a handful that didn't have one assigned already um but you're right the minute that was something that came up that we just were like let's just kind of keep it, try to keep it as even as possible. Again, so that we didn't think, you know, we didn't have time, we were a little behind and even rolling it out. So we didn't do a pre-survey, like what you had mentioned. I think that's a great idea. I would love to see, you know, what those impacts are. So I'm hoping that part of having the staff along the way is that we might be able to, you know, take some of that knowledge and have it in-house a little bit easier during, while we're going. Um, yep. and, and have that just to see like, oh no, it hasn't changed much or yeah, you know, it just keeps it a little bit more um, so that I have it more readily when we talk about this in department heads or that kind of thing. Um, uh, that was a lot. I had one more thing I forget now <laughs> that I wanted to mention, but maybe it will come to me. Do you have any other questions or? Yeah, Marguerite, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm curious if you had to do any kind of public outreach or promotion of this stipend to the community just to make it make folks more aware of it that it was an option to encourage maybe participation from other folks who might not necessarily participate right we haven't done tons we did a little bit of it and we definitely put it in like some of our equity newsletter that we rolled it out that it's you know this new thing Honest, we were a little bit like, let's get it underway so we don't scare people off with like the form changes first. And we are mm -hmm. hoping to kind of um, go out there. June is sort of when we have our reappointment big deal situation. And we have, um, you know, we're planning an event around that as well this year that we haven't had before about how to, you know, have, um, you know, like for um, just in an equity standpoint, hoping to have Ali Dan come and talk about being on a committee and being a new American and those kinds of things. So we're hoping at that point to actually really push the communication of it and to really, you know, kind of put it out there in a, in a way that's not just at a different public meeting, you know, you know or, or just mentioning it sort of as an update, which is all we've really done thus far. It's sort of updating people, but I'm not sure how far we've reached with that in order to, like you said, see what that impact actually might look like. Um, oh, that was the one thing that came up uh, often was people wanted to just pay them at the end of the year. 
um, mm -hmm. you know, like we do or, or quarterly or something to that effect as we do with the other like commissions that are paid um, already. And that was something that we talked a lot about and, and just wanted them to get paid as soon as possible after their meeting because it's a cash flow issue that we're, you know, at least with, from the equity standpoint that we had talked about. Um, we didn't want them to have to wait for that. So that was something we talked about for a while and felt that, you know, the sooner the better actually. So that's why it's a little different than like a select board stipend or that kind of thing. So um, yes, that's sort of it. Other questions? Um, oh, yeah. It, it, it's a flat rate, right? Like you're giving the same amount yes. per meeting regardless of like length of meeting or any, anything else really. Yep. Right and then now, is there any type of cap on that? Like if people are on multiple committees, it's just once they hit a certain threshold, then they have to go through another tax step. Yes. I mean, there is for, yes, we kind of, <laughs> at this point, we haven't run across like <clears throat> someone who's on tons and tons who's submitted yet. <clears throat> so we're sort of waiting a little bit case by case, just because we don't <clears throat> have tons of people yet that have shown that that's going to be an issue. Um, but we do, for example, um, I think we, right now we said, well, we'll pay the higher, like say it was like a select board member that was then on another committee or something, um, we would pay the higher rate right now. So they would just continue to get their, their select board stipend and, and, and potentially not be extra on top at this point. Um, and and, and you were doing like $50 rate. per meeting, is that right? Yeah, right now yeah. it's 50 yeah. um, Um, I have a couple of other questions, but yeah. <laughs> we're going to have others jump in too. Um, or do you know of other cities or towns that are doing this and have you been in touch with them as, as well? Or you're kind of been making it up as far as I know. Don't yeah. know of okay. any. And I, yes, if you do, I would love to talk to them. I feel a little <laughs> bit like we are on this island just tearing up yeah, yeah, yeah. in the middle of the fog. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then you're a few months in, and I knowing that committees change over so slowly, essentially, um, are you seeing it have an impact of diversifying committees? Do you have any goals of like over five years changing 10% or, you know, like, is there, do you have, do you have any like metrics of success? Right. I don't know that we have metrics of success as of yet. I would say, um, again, that's partly just because I don't even know. No, yeah. I think we've only, yeah. Well, it's not been very long and our forms have changed so many times. I wouldn't be surprised if that ended up being a bit of a, <laughs> of a confusing barrier, just sort of as we wanted to make sure um, we really got it right on the form and, you know, went with that. So again, like I said, I'm hoping come June sort of that we can get maybe a bit like take our baseline then even though it's sort of been in effect you know I just kind of let's for our side of getting it evened out and then hopefully by June we've really got it going and then we can take that baseline of who gets appointed and then see over like you said three years if you know us intentionally getting the word out and really expanding yeah. beyond our normal sort of communication lines um, if then, you know, come three years from now, we've actually had a different type of impact. Now that I don't know quite how to measure if that's stipend or not yet. We don't have a survey to that effect, or if, you know, maybe it'll be because we have some other intentional communication things that we're also trying to roll out and maybe it's just all of them. Um, but, but it's a good thing to think about, um, just if there's ways to capture, you know, maybe it's just even asking people in two or three years, you know, if this was a deciding factor for them or something, but. Yeah, yeah, retroactive. Um, okay, and then my last kind of main question is, is we have $30,000 to work with, which is not enough for every city committee participant. So if everyone applies, we would run out of money, right, right um, pretty quickly. Um, so there's like a lot of different ways that we could do this, you know, we could, do, and knowing that you guys have done it differently, but kind of seeing how it's rolling out, like, we could do this as a first come first serve until we run out of funds. We could choose a few committees to start with. We could have a certain number of seats per community. They all seem like bad options. And so I just like yeah. wonder if you had any, like recognizing the constraints that, not constraints, but like recognizing that the city has really given CJAC and staff a lot of um, flexibility with an autonomy to be able to roll this out. Like, would love your thoughts on kind of what you see as being the best practice here. 
yeah, or yeah. what, not best practice, but like, yeah, recognizing the constraints, <clears throat> what would you recommend? Right. I guess at first I would maybe be very clear about just, but just be very transparent about the money thing issue. And then if you did have something where, you know, you had people opt in or, or, or just to see even, right. Or take a, you know, like some kind of loose poll or, because I was surprised at how many folks we've had who have opted, who have not opted in, who just have just, you know, and, and have done it intentionally. Like I, I'm like, oh, did you not see the form or just want making oh, yeah. sure like, are you confused about our form? You know, but, but have been like, you know, I'm good. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to take this stipend. I'm well, right. And that's because like the people who are in the committees now have done it without knowing that. Exactly. exactly. Are, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess, yeah, I would start there and just see. Um, but then, I mean, yeah, that priority, we had the same conversation. That's really hard. I mean, you could do sort of, you know, some of the, um, you could look at some of your committees where there are, you know, sort of more of the BIPOC marginalized and see if they self identify that way. I hate to, you know, I'm not trying to put identities on folks, but we yeah. also know, or, and we also know that some of our committees just are, you know, more intentionally, at least because we've been working on this, you know, with creative discourse and such this far, um, you know, we are, um, we just know that they are more um, in need of, of the stipend and they are the ones who kind of put it forward in the first place of something that would be a barrier for them. You know, you know, some of the ones on the committees we have now that weren't formed, that through creative discourse we formed, and part of that survey, you know, to like you all had in 2020 was a stipend, you know, for the meetings. Um, so I guess maybe looking at <clears throat> some of your committees and the makeups and um, just seeing um, if there are some more than others where people have been louder about it or have been more obvious about their needs. But again, it's, yeah, it's that sketchy area of like, <laughs> you just don't want to go to a committee and be like, wow, everyone here seems like you might need a stipend. Like, what is that? That's just awful practice. Right. So, and that we want to get more folks <laughs> exactly. who need yes. the stipends on all the committees. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't super helpful to you, but I guess the mm. first thing to start then would be, you know, do it until it's all used up because that yeah, at okay. least link, it lets them opt in. It's very transparent that it will get used up, but then if we need more of it, then that's something they can control when they go to the budget, you know, as voters or requesting from the council more, and you'll have that data point of they want more, but we used it all up already, you know, at, on these days or whatever. Um, but at least that you'll more, you know, you don't have to decide for people and it's equitably just sort of, okay, you know, we're using this, you know, as long as you're transparent from the start too, I think then it's understood that they won't get it past the 30,000, you know, that's all. Yeah. But I would just want to make sure that you were very clear about that, I guess. Michael, Jeremy, Cameron. Yeah, I think I just want to kind of confirm um, some things that I heard um, as we should be looking toward really trying to resolve in these first months. It sounds like kind of the financial details and the insurance details, try and get as clear on that as we can before we start inviting people in and figuring out our process. So we know like what we need, what we don't need. Um, and so that's the work that I think Cameron has to do, <laughs> which hopefully we can help too. Um, is, that, is that right, do you think? Yes, that, that's, I would start there and, and at the same time, like you're having these conversations, now you have some limitations around the 30,000, you know, that kind of thing, so that when you roll it out, you know, sort of, kind of how you're applying that money, or, you know, to your, to your point there. Um, yes. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so maybe we'll transition to the next piece here. If there's, yeah, anything else comes up on the sleeping piece, would love, yeah, love to circle back. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so we worked with Creative Discourse in 2020. We have not been working with them in 2020 or like fiscal year 21. We've not been working with them in fiscal year 22 yet. Um, and kind of one of the next big things is to do kind of a, we're, we're talking about doing like a big, um, 
equity summit and, and, you know, bringing folks together and just because of COVID and everything else, we're kind of delaying that decision till this summer and um, reached out to, after our last meeting, reached out to Creative Discourse to say, here's like our draft survey. Can you, like, are we looking for the right, are we asking the right questions here? Like, do you have any thoughts or reflection? Like, can we just like, uh, you know, asking for their opinion on, on things? And they were like, this is consulting. Please, right. <laughs> like, you know, like, please have a contract with us. And so they shared back a, a contract that I shared with you guys that is um, for five months. So March 15th to July 15th, like, you know, and, and to hold five 60 minute coaching sessions, um, you know, having them send out emails to city participants for, um, who participated in the equity audit, because, you know, as you know, there, that's kind of, that's also had that divided between, you know, so we don't have those contacts and things, and the city doesn't have those contacts, and then to like review and offer suggestions, and the kind of the, the, they, that contract would be like $3,000 for those five meetings and sending out those emails and things for a multiracial team of co-facilitators or $1,500 for a single facilitator. And I think I got this and then my kind of gut reaction was like, that's a lot of money for five hours of meetings and for sending out some emails. Um, and then in my, like, and then I paused on that and then was like, and it's more about like the relationships and that expertise and like all of that background work. And so I think I, you know, we haven't talked about this at all yet, but I, I think as someone who's like worked with them a lot, a lot more, if you just had any like gut reaction of being like, oh yeah, it's definitely going to be super helpful to have them look over. I, I, yeah. I mean, like now that I'm asking this question, I'm like, maybe that's like a, you know, confidential business thing. And maybe you don't want that on recorded on this call or so, you know like so I apologize if this is putting you in a tricky spot but I'm just being like before kind of we have our own internal conversation like if you had any reaction um yeah I think you know it is the relationships that are invaluable that's sort of what we learned and um also having it not come from the government at this point is also something that is um very beneficial and at this day and age um you know it costs the well, not, it costs, you know, what it costs, um, I guess, to do that. And so um, I think, you know, it, it really depends on how um, effective, uh, and I don't know, I, if I had had that, I would have taken it um, as an option, I think, just because I would say our forms, like I, I you know, we're still working on it and for, by no means probably is it the most um, equitable layout or, you know, it, it probably we could be doing much, you know, better and we will continue to try and work towards that. Um, uh, but, but, um, I think, you know, in some ways that, um, will help you, even if, you know, you can't answer all the questions they come up with you know, or whatever from their getting from their survey. Um, it, it may help you in three years to know where you want to go with this program, even, you know, for the stipend program, I mean just because often what comes back are things that like, yeah, we need to change at a much higher level. Um, and that's good to know just in your organization, because then there are things like Cameron can work with on the, you know, internal policies, whatever, things like that, that, that then can be worked through, um, but, you know, might not affect necessarily your rollout right now, um, yeah. just because you, you kind of, you want to roll it out. So you're going to do, you know, go with imperfection for the moment instead of letting that stop you. Um, but, they, but they are like, they just, yeah, they have such great feedback usually. And, um, and, and if they're going to email those folks, yeah, I think it could give you some very good insight that our form won't, doesn't have currently, you know, it is just the power dynamic of us in our own municipality forming it. So. I Thanks so I much. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want to drag Marguerite into further debate about yeah. this. So sorry. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah. If you have other Thank questions, you. sorry, it was a lot. Um, but if you have other questions, yeah, feel free to reach out. You know where to find me, Kim. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'll follow Thanks. up and and try to get some of these forms for you from you and um just Perfect. documents. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank yeah. you all. And thank um, you for your luck. time. Appreciate it. Of course, and um, yeah, share whatever you learn. Happy to change ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you. thanks. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Woo!
How are you feeling about all that, Cameron? That was <laughs> a little. Um, you know, so uh, my initial feedback is going to be sort of with this creative discourse thing and sort of to Jamry's oh, yeah. point, a lot of this work is going to inevitably fall on me and yeah. um, it would be very great and I would very much welcome having um, the creative discourse group mm -hmm. to help me through that. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that we can maybe propose adding or fleshing out a little bit in that limited scope and time proposal with them, um, that would be great if they could like review the policies that I write or, you know, just to have another pair of eyes on them. Cause you know, when things are assigned in, in this um, uh, organization, we don't have a lot of administrative staff uh, we have very limited administrative mm -hmm. staff. So it would just be me and like the finance director trying to hash mm -hmm. this out. So mm -hmm. it would be great. Do we have clarity on what um, multiracial team co facility? How is that two people? Is it, and do we need two people? Is one person enough? Um, what, what's, what's your view about that? I mean, two people almost is uh, larger than our committee at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think also like they recommended like having five one-on-one -on -one meetings. And I was like, I don't that's, I don't think we, like the committee needs that. I think that's more like Cameron needs five mm -hmm. hours of their time to be able to like support that. Right, yeah, right? right. That, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, you have the money. It's, yeah. You know, I think it would be important to to work with them on this part of, you know, their recommendations. I do think that some of what they propose is sort of not, uh, I don't want to say helpful because I think that's the wrong word, but mm -hmm. I think you guys know what I'm trying to say is like, yeah. to get to implementation, how, how do we best leverage them to get to implementation? Mm -hmm. um, and so do you want, oh, go ahead. Can someone remind me um, what this this email was meant to do or contain in their proposal? An email sent to the audit focus groups. I thought that was to let them know about the stipends and to encourage okay. people to apply and stuff. Okay. But that's how I'm reading that, so mm -hmm. I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, Cameron, I support Cameron. Your request for outside assistance, I think that's super important. It's also making me wonder if we could, as a committee, do another round of just surveying the environment for other cities that maybe are now thinking about this who haven't before. Because, yeah, it was so helpful to hear Marguerite. And imagine if we had like two or three more conversations like that with other folks, like that could be really beneficial, so. I can ask, um, I'll ask some of my networks if they know of anyone or if y'all can find any mm -hmm. communities that are doing this like yeah. i will i will i will get them here to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I wonder if brattleboro is a place to to inquire but they because they had a, a very deep police review yeah. and uh, it sounded like they were very very interested in in that kind of stuff and i would expect that at brattleboro actually I know when, yeah, last Vermont Lego City's in town last year and they didn't know of anyone besides yeah. Essex. So, um, but that was last year too. So, yeah. yeah, it'd also be so great if someone had done this for like three to five years and could <laughs> report back on how that's going. And that doesn't seem to exist. Yeah. Well, um, I guess it means we're on the vanguard, which is exciting. <laughs> we're, we're pushing something forward. Yeah. Um, so Cameron, just real quick, just to go, I mean, go back to the creative discourse response. So I think, does it sound like um, we want to ask as a multiracial team, was that a two people team? Like, yeah, do we, do we want the two person team? And then it sounds like we want the, the five monthly 60 meeting coaching session, consultation sessions to be more focused on reviewing the materials. Um, but does that seem like the right amount of time? Does that seem... Um, yeah, any other clarification or, or adjustments that I should make to this um, this RFP? 
I, I really think it needs to be focused more on helping um, with like the policies and procedures review. And I think maybe helping us with at least like the kickoff procedures, right? Like a kickoff meeting maybe, or a, um, uh, the next committee on committees or something, mm -hmm. not that maybe the one in April, they could talk about it, but I don't think we'll be ready with any sort of rollout by then, but yeah, maybe the next one, right? Like one happening in the summer, it could help us with some sort of like kickoff. Here's how this is going to roll out. Here's what we did. And here's what, you know, CJAC did, um, to make this a reality. Here's how it's going to work kind of thing. I think that's a really I, good I would point. also, I'm sorry, Michael. No, it's just to to present to present CD with an agenda, a set of agendas. I mean, on this meeting we want X, Y, Z. On on the second meeting we want A, B, C, or that kind of stuff, so that they come prepared and and uh, and we're prepared and, and we have specific questions. Or if if they're gonna if we're gonna devote one or two of those five. To having them just working with uh, with Cameron, that they should know that, and then Cameron can have her own agenda with them. Mm -hmm. than, you know, I, I think being specific about that is helpful because it makes them focus on what their advice, you know, what what kind of advice is being requested, and they can then ask for information that they would need rather than just going in there and you know, sort of off the cuff stuff. So uh, for the next step, just recognizing our next meeting is going to be kind of right when this is rolling out, probably be finalizing them. Do I have everyone like, cons well, like what, yeah, is it okay if Cameron and I do kind of the back and forth with creative discourse and make a decision between now and the next meeting, like up to $3,000, have it be more focused on policies and procedures be more about and and launch mm -hmm. and make a like finalize the pro the proposal and sign on the dotted line kind of over the next two weeks is that okay i yeah. support that yeah i think that's we should need to put that in in the minutes as the proposal authorizing the two of you author and all the other mm -hmm. things that you were specific about that and then we have it as a record and, and i'll i'll make yep. that motion mm -hmm. i was about to say that sounds like a motion to me yeah. like a motion. i second that motion all in favor, say aye. 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 Yep. Any of those? Great. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Um, I think the other kind of proposals that were discussed here were um having it be a first come, first serve um stipend process. Um, I thought her rationale for it made sense to me. And I just I didn't know if anyone that that was just like a big topic of conversation. And so um, do we want to continue to have that be an open conversation or do we want to close that decision? You mean the idea of we've got a finite amount of money, come and get it. It's first, I mean, I, for some reason that hadn't really occurred to me in the kind of complex algorithms of yeah. equity. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's something really clean about that that I, I, I think makes a lot of sense. And knowing that this is a pilot, I mean, and be very clear and transparent about that. Uh, it, it sounds like it probably would be a lot easier to manage. And again, thinking about Cameron's role in all this too. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm leaning towards that. Is that for all committees or did, when did, we're, all right. So we're not, we're not going to use a sample of committees. In, yeah. In, okay. You know, so my initial thought on that is one, it is a lot cleaner and it does support the idea of is this enough money, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think it would be easier to get to, is this enough money? My only hesitation and what I would want to figure out with creative discourse is how do we track that? Yeah. How do you track over time if this makes a difference to certain committees demographics? Mm -hmm. If there's no like, these five committees are getting money uh, offered to them, over time that has diversified who is on the committee. Yep. If we say all of the committees, I, I don't, and some don't take it. I, I don't know. It gets right. mm -hmm. that tracking gets a little harder for a pilot program because that's the idea is the mm -hmm. pilot program is not 
let's see if it works and people take the money. It's let's see if it works and it gets us to our goal, which is diversifying mm -hmm. the committees. And so that's my one concern about that is that it will be harder to track over time mm -hmm. and it will be mm -hmm. harder to see the impact. But I don't know. So I think that would be something I, I also would want creative discourse to weigh in on because I don't know how to okay. track, I wouldn't know how to track that. I yeah, I wonder, to... just thinking out loud, I wonder if there is a, there is some kind of a intake survey mechanism we could use for any new committee members coming on um, that could track, you know, well, if it wasn't for the stipend, no, I wouldn't be considering this. Um, so, but I think you're right, creative discourse should, should have some good ideas about that. I, I just want to remind us that we, um, sorry, my phone is ringing, but um, we are, our title is Social and Economic Just, uh, um, Justice. And, and, I, um, and while I appreciate the need for uh, but defining diversity in, in racial or, or ethnic uh, terms, I think we have to say diversity also accounts for economic condition. Mm -hmm. and so, it, it, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, just so we keep that in mind, you know, if we, we may not get the kind of uh, ethnic racial diversity that we want out of this, but we, may, we might get the, the economic diversity that we're, we're, we also, also want. I mean, I don't, it's, it's not an either or for me. But mm -hmm. I think we need to keep in mind that it has to be, and it should be both. Yeah, I think, I think as a pilot a survey. Oh, sorry. I, I just think yes, Michael. And as a pilot, I think we use the pilot to kind of measure the change before we set, you know, like maybe three-year, five-year goals about what we want our committees to look like in terms of um, diversity over that longer term so I, I i think you're right and it's not they're not mutual i think we don't know yet what we want our committees to kind of kind of be representative of yet and i think right, that's like why that's we're using have, the, sorry Shan. i just say like we're, we're kind of using housing you know housing rentals like if you you know have other family mm -hmm. like using the like some of these other mm -hmm. things as like the metrics of tracking that social mm -hmm. and economic diversity sorry go ahead cameron no, that's exactly what I was going to say. So thank you. Um, in the survey. Okay, so um, sounds like we're not going to make that decision right now because we're going to bring it back to creative discourse. Cool. Okay. Um, anything else with that or should we move to the committee on committee planning? Oh, uh, report back for, and before moving to city council and city committee report back. Sorry about that. Recognize we have 10 minutes left. Sprint to the finish. Um, I could not make the meeting, oh my God, like three weeks ago now, the, or two weeks ago, the, um, the last city council meeting that Cameron pointed out for us. And yeah, I didn't know like if there's any report back from that or from other, other committees that we should be aware of. I feel like, I don't even remember what we talked Why? about at the last council meeting. <laughs> uh, I think it was a police review committee, something, something. Yeah. Oh yeah. What. Right. So yes. So the. Um, I'm trying to find it now. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, we did talk about the um, police review committee and the steps. Um, uh, just things that you should know about is we're still working on community engagement after use of force incidents. That's a big one. I think that's one of the more important ones. Um, we are uh, working really hard to develop protocols. The police review committee, uh, some members have continued to uh, say they'll help us with that. We're also implementing a chaplain program, um, by the way, uh, in our police department, um, who will definitely have a role in that because we've basically come to the conclusion that it shouldn't be us or the police anyway, leading any sort of restorative community conversation. They should be part of it, but not the leader in that. So the chaplain program will become important there. And there's a couple of things that obviously we as the city, as a monolith, as staff, don't really 
um, support. And so we'll need to bring um, the community and the uh, council in to lead the conversation on. And we've talked about that. There was like the, the ordinance changes for public drinking and prostitution. So those council has to continue to talk about um, uh, the remaining ongoing conversations are those two, the policy on fair and impartial policing and a an, uh, civilian oversight committee. So those are things that are um, still on the docket to talk about at council meetings. Mm -hmm. So okay. just so you know. Mm -hmm. um, also last night, um, I went to the DRC um, and was approved for a zoning permit to add lockers behind the uh, rec center for those experiencing homelessness to use to store belongings. So we're slowly chugging away at that, pro uh, that project. So uh, hopefully I'll have more substantive updates on that soon. Exciting. I didn't realize that was happening. That was, yeah. that, that was moving. Cool. Um, anything else? Any other report backs? Thank you. Um, so then also, so the last thing we had was our goals and agenda setting for the committee on committees. And I feel like this is a bigger conversation than five minutes. And so maybe I'm thinking what we can do is just say the big picture things. And then I can come back next meeting with like an actual proposal for discussion rather than sussing it out altogether. But I think we had talked about, and I just don't see this like in our notes essentially was like talking about wanting our goals of the meeting to be rolling out the stipends. And like, that's why we're having this meeting now at this timing and everything mm -hmm. else. And then the second goal is being continuing that like relationship building and, and cross pollination and networking between all the different committees. Um, and so do those still sound, are those, are those the two goals? Like, are there any other goals for this committee and committees? Um, and yeah, anything else to kind of hold while making this proposal? And then does that make sense for the next step is to come back with a proposal next week, next two weeks? That makes sense. I guess I would, maybe this is just a sub point, but the relationship building, I think it kind of happens by the convening, but it's, it's also, it seems like checking in on the equity conversation that we started at the first committee yeah. of committees meeting um and i don't know what the details of our are of that but we, we certainly have the creative discourses report to look at um, updates on maybe other things that have been happening on the equity front um and maybe the open kind of more divergent conversation about what are people thinking of right now what's on the horizon what do you are, are there new concerns other than the last time you met that kind of thing? Great. So, Who's writing this all down? Uh, I'm assuming that in the discussion of ruling out the the uh, stipends, we we will uh, be asking. Are we are we asking or are we telling the com the committee chairs what the, their responsibilities or their their what they need to do is that a is that a question we pose to them or is it here's what we think is your your role in in this mm -hmm. and let them respond to that which way which way is that going to go i think that kind of depends on how y'all decide to roll it out right yeah like is it staff's responsibility to take uh a proper minutes that kind of I, the word i was looking for was attendance um so that kind of thing. I think that would be easy to have a conversation about once we figure out what the rollout is. But I will say I, that we very much depend on uh, people taking accurate minutes, but Marguerite's comment about that was very true. <laughs> and I think like our have, what we're telling people to do is to do the pre rollout survey um and kind of walking people through why that's important and, mm -hmm. and right giving the context for that and how to yeah. do that in the committees um is what i was thinking we're like definitely telling them to do and then being mm -hmm. like and heads up that other stuff is coming so mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. That 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 was my understanding of it, but I just thought we we should be clear about how we want to present this to them. That here's what we want. You know, we, we're we're expecting you to do, and uh, and and here's where we, what we hope you will do as a, exercising your leadership role. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And then let them ask questions to us. Mm -hmm. Response. Okay, I do have another minute. I do have another call in two minutes, and I would love to get another cup of coffee. I'm like <laughs> feeling that right now. Um, mm -hmm. But is there anything else that we should really make sure gets say, said today? Or um, see you guys in two weeks. Okay. Yeah, this was really okay. productive. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. All right. Good see you soon. Bye. Bye.